Today we're gonna word up a flow switch, which is uh, to prevent water overflowing. And the first step would be making sure the unit is off at the thermostat so that it's not sending any signal. So just make sure it's at the off position and the fan is on auto, because if it's in on, then the fan is gonna come on. So just leave it at auto. So we're gonna come to the unit, which is right here. Pretty much we're gonna wire it up the the flow switch with the uh, thermostat wiring that goes from the actual thermostat and it goes to the inside unit uh, wire here we're gonna look for the one that is for cooling which is the yellow one and I'll show you in a little bit how to hook up the the flow switch to those wires. We got two wires coming from the flow switch and all it does is that it has a, a little float piece that when this one gets filled up with water, this will float and then these two wires are gonna be hooked up to the wires to the outside unit and eventually when, when the floater it's on, it's gonna shut off the unit, like shut off the signal to the outside unit so the outside unit will shut off so the first step would be um, installing this piece into the secondary drain. The secondary drain, it's always the one that it's gonna be higher from the primary drain. The primary drain in this case right here, you can see how this one's lower, which means that every time the unit it's uh, creating water and it drains it will drain to the primary drain so the secondary drain is where the flow switch is gonna be at the reason for that is because when this one gets clogged up the water will rise and eventually instead of overflowing the floater will float and shut off the unit on the outside and, and when the outside unit is off all it means is that it's not gonna create any more cooling and it's not gonna create any more water so let's go ahead and do that okay so the first step would be I think the easy step the, the easiest thing to do would be to install the flow switch in the secondary of the drain first and this one I'm gonna cut this piece because I wasn't gonna be able to turn it to unscrew it so sometimes we have to take it out sometimes we can leave it on so it kind of looks like this once everything is off that's a, a male PVC so this one once it's hooked up to here we're gonna we're gonna put the sensor float switch like this we can put uh, PVC glue on this, so I'm going to do that. PVC glue. Put some glue on the outside. Put some glue on the inside. Slide these ones together like this. We're going to make sure this one's screwed on. And this, on these uh, drains, these drains, it's always hand tightened only, or else you could break, you could break that drain pan. So all we have to do is just slide this in there, like that. So once that one's ready, we can put, the cap that comes with the it comes with it so this cap doesn't need glue this one's just push it in there that way when the water fills up the floater will rise up this one all we have to do is just kind of put it in there too make sure this one's loose some of them when they're packaged they're stuck you have to take something out, but this one is already loose. So, 
stick it in there. Okay, now the, the good part. This one was stapled, so I'm gonna remove those staple parts and then expose the wire. So we got two wires going to the floater. We're gonna identify which one is the cooling. So in this case, This wire right here is the one that goes to the thermostat and I know that because it goes directly to that wall and then on the other side of that wall is the thermostat so this is the thermostat wire that goes to the thermostat. So the thermostat wire always going to have the red one which is the power. Sometimes they have different colors but the most, the most common one so it's the red one for the power, the green one for the fan. We're not gonna use those. The white one for the heat, we're not gonna use that. And then the, the blue one, in some cases is for the cooling. In some cases, the blue one is common, but here, they're not using the yellow one. So the yellow one also usually is for the cooling, but in this case, they, they only have the blue one for the cooling. So we're gonna use that for the cooling. We know that it's for the cooling because the wire that goes to the outside unit is this one. So this one is going to go to the outside unit which means you have the cooling which is the red one and then the white one for the common. So we're going to use the cooling right here which is this one. All the colors, sometimes they use different colors but we just have to identify what they're using in this one. So we're going to take this blue one out, which is the cooling for the thermostat. We're going to put it in one of the, one of the two wires that we have from the float sensor. And all it does is that the wire for the cooling from the thermostat goes, sends the signal to the cooling it goes into the black wire, comes into the float switch, and it comes out back again into this. So from here, it's gonna go to here, through here. So now this one, we put it back as it originally was. So I'm gonna need an extra wire now. together and then this one just tighten it okay so again this is the red one for the power 24 volts the white one for the heat the green one for the fan and then the blue one for the cooling they could easily have used have could have used a, a yellow color for the cooling but but for some reason they're using the blue one for the yeah, for the cooling so the blue one goes to here and then comes back out and then connects it connects to the to the wire which is this red wire that goes to the outside unit that's all we need to know this wire right here goes to the unit sometimes the unit has the wires coming out here but they they just install this wire to to get to this all the two wires so this wire represents the unit so now that everything is hooked up we know that whenever we have a clock line the water overflows and reaches to a point where the float gets high and the unit outside will shut off and then the first thing would, you would do to verify is to pull out this top part uh, 
There we go. And then if it's wet, that means this one's filled up with water. You can stick your finger in here and then it would be filled up with water. If it is filled up with water, then you can take this off, take the water out. That's why this one doesn't have glue. You could, you could take this off again. It's pretty hard because it's a really tight fit so that it doesn't need that glue. But you can easily take this off and then take the water off, cut the line, flush it, get it ready to go, and then the water will flow again. And then this will always prevent the water overflowing. That's, that way you don't have a wet floor when you have hardwood floor or carpet or the unit is in the second floor and then you have a, a wet ceiling in the first floor and spend more money on fixing the ceiling. So that's it. It's ready. It's ready to go. That's all.